Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. Now, lots of people ask me about iTunes and why they should use it and a lot of people tell me they don't actually like it and I think part of that is because they don't know how to use it. So let's just start with what iTunes actually does. Well, it's a great library, it's free and it works on the Mac or Windows and it basically stores all your music, video files such as films and TV shows and podcasts as well. And with that, you can then organize them, create playlists, which are compilations, so you've got the music in particular orders that you want. You can actually do that with videos as well. You can also use it to sync with things like this, the iPod Touch, iPods, also the iPhone and iPad. And that way you can organize your songs, movies, and so on, and swap them around and put them on to these devices, which is very handy. So it's a great sort of little library that you can actually put on there. So it's very good for that. So you might already have things on disk, you can put it on there. You can also put little files that you've got on this. If you've got MP3 music files or other music files, you can copy them across to video files too. So we're gonna go into that. Now there's a lot to cover with iTunes. So I wanna start off this week by showing you how to install it, how to get your music on there from disk and also if you've got any files and just what the playlists are about. Next week, I wanna take a look at using the iTunes store and also podcasts as well and what they're all about. And then it'll probably run over into a third week where I'll then be showing you about synchronizing with these things and also the tips and tricks involved in doing that as well. Now, one of the other advantages of using iTunes before we actually get on to doing the install is that if you've got things like this, the iPods and also the iPhone and iPad, iTunes automatically banks up if you've got that setting on there, which is a default setting, so that you've always got your data backed up. It's also really great because if you want to restore it, if you want to get that information back onto a new iPod or you just want to wipe everything and start again, iTunes just makes it so simple. So let's take a look at this. Let's first start by downloading iTunes and installing it. So with iTunes, you can actually get it for Windows and the Mac. I've got this on the PC at the moment, but basically we just have to go to the uh, same place for any of these and that is apple.com forward slash iTunes and what you'll want to do is then download it from there. So what we'll do is we'll start off by going to the websites. When you go there it automatically detects whether or not you're using Windows or a Mac and you can see it here it says on this one iTunes 10.1.2 for Windows XP Vista or 7. Now I want this, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna untick these two here because basically I've already signed up. As you can imagine, I've already got iTunes installed, but if you wanna receive the newsletter and updates, then you have to tick these, or at least one of them ticks, and you have to put your email address in. So I'm going to just leave it at that for the moment. I am then gonna click on Download Now. You'll want to know what I want to do. I'm gonna to choose to save it, and I'm gonna put it on the desktop. Now, if I'm doing the same thing on a Mac, it knows that I want to download the Mac software. So if I go to the same website, apple.com forward slash iTunes, you can see here it wants to download it for OS X. Again, I'm gonna untick both of those and I'm going to now choose download now. And it will do the same thing, it will download it and then it will automatically open up a window with the install in there. Now I'm speeding some of this up because I would have to wait some time for the download and that all depends on the speed of your connection. Once it's downloaded, as you can see on the Mac, it automatically opened up a window. On the PC, I have to go to where I saved it and I saved it on the desktop and you'll see that there is one here called iTunes Setup. So I'm going to run that and what it will do is it will talk me through the steps of setting up iTunes and it does basically the same thing both on Windows and the Mac. You might get, if you're on a PC, you might actually get some prompts such as, do you want to allow Bonjour? This is if you've got a firewall such as Zone Alarm. And also, do you want iTunes Helper? You can say yes to both of those. Bonjour is the Apple service for connecting onto networks. And also iTunes Helper is what helps iTunes. So once that's all firing up, things that I want to know is, do you want to add the songs, audiobooks, and videos automatically? and also add WMA files, which are also Windows Media files on there as well. You can do this later. If you don't have many, then you could do that now and it won't take you too long. If you've got them scattered all over your computer, it will scan all over and it could take some time. But that's entirely up to you if you wanna do that now. 
The other option you get is whether or not you want to keep them organized by iTunes in a media folder, in which case iTunes does all the organizing for you, or you can leave it in separate files and folders. So basically what that means is if you've already got files on here, MP3 files, it will keep them in the existing folder. However, if you choose the first option, yes, keep my iTunes media folder organized, it will copy those files into the iTunes media folder, but leave them in the existing folder. So effectively you're duplicating them. The advantage of putting them in the iTunes media folder is quite simply, it's all organized in one place. And if you ever need to make a backup, like copying it onto an external hard drive, it's easy. It's all there, like in your My Music or in your iTunes folder, depending on whether you're using Windows or a Mac. So for me, I think it's a good idea to actually choose yes. But again, that's up to you if you've already got a whole load of music on there and you haven't got much space left on your computer and you think, well, I'm just simply going to run out of space. OK, so I'm going to install that. I've now done that and there I am. And you can see there's iTunes. There's nothing here at the moment. It says download music or import your CDs. So taking the CD and putting it into iTunes is very simple. I've got Brothers in Arms here by Dire Straits. Just thought it somehow seemed a bit apt as this is one of the early CDs that was highly promoted back in the 80s. So I'm just going to pop that in there. It'll just take a moment for it to get up to speed and also for iTunes to just find it. But when it does, you'll see it will come up with a listing of the music. What it does is it's going to look at the CD and it's going to compare it with an online database and it will then know what the names of the tracks are, which you can see here. It says, would you like to import the CD Brothers in Arms into your iTunes library? I could say yes and it would take all the tracks or I could say no right now. I'm going to say no right now because I just want to show you, you may not want all the tracks. So what you can do is you can simply untick them. That way it's only going to take these and if I wanted some, I just tick them again. I'm going to take all of them. You can see how long each one of them are, the database and what the album is as well. It's also got the genre here too. So down in the bottom right hand corner, there's a button import CD. I'm just going to click on that and at the top here, you'll see that it's importing here. Okay, so that could take a good few minutes, so I'm going to skip forward to one I've prepared earlier. So I've finished with this CD now. I'm just going to eject it by clicking on this little eject button here, so I can take the disc out. I'm done with that. I'm just going to put that away. And you'll see up at the top here, I've got my music library. These are my libraries here, music, films, TV programs, podcasts and radio. Nothing in there, except in the music section. You can see I've got So Far Away, Money For Nothing, Walk Of Like, Your Latest Trick. And you'll see there's no actual icon here. What you can do is you can go into Advanced and choose Get Album Artwork. And it will go to the store and it will actually check to see if there's actually an album cover to put there in its place. Now that could take a few minutes, so we're not going to do that right now. So that's how I got one from a CD onto here. What I want to do now is actually take some files that I've already got on the computer and actually put them on here. So you might have those on a memory stick or something else. So these are files that you've already got and they're already digital. So I've got those. I've got some on a USB memory stick. Before I bring them across, one thing I just want to check, well, this is in your preferences. What I'm going to do is go into edit and preferences if you're using a Mac, you'll want to go into the iTunes menu and choose Preferences there. Go to the Advanced tab, choose Copy Files to iTunes Media Folder when adding to Library. Otherwise, it doesn't actually really copy them across from where I'm about to. So I'm just going to click there, click on OK. OK, now if I go to File, choose Add File to Library. Click here, go to Removable Disk. These will be different depending on where you've got them stored. Here are my MP3s. I'm just going to select some, click on Open, and it's actually copying across, which is pretty quick. I'm just going to do one more because they were MP3s. I'm just going to go to Add File to Library. It's going to go back and choose 24 Nights, and you'll see they're a different type of file here. They end in M4A. That's OK iTunes will read them. So as you can see, it's brought those files in as well. And if we had an account which we will set up next week, then what I can do is actually get the album artwork as well.
if I want to start playing one, I simply either double click on it or I click on the play button and you can see that I can slide backwards and forwards to fast forward through the song. Same would apply if I had a video as well. And if I want to stop it at any time, I just click on the pause button. So one of the things I might want to do is create a playlist and that is basically a compilation of all the songs that I've got, basically creating a best of. So what I do is I go into file, choose new playlist and you'll see it comes up down here as an untitled playlist and I'm just going to type in a name. I'm going to call this one February 2011. I can create another playlist if I like. I'm going to call this one Rock and Roll. And I can have as many playlists as I like. Okay, so now what I want to do is get songs from my library into my playlist. So I'm going to start by putting some songs into the February 2011 one and I simply just click and drag them from my library and drop them in there. You can actually select more than one at a time and if you know how to do multiple selecting like holding down the control key in Windows or the command key on a Mac then you can select more than one at a time. Now if you've got lots of songs and you're looking for them you may want to search and you can do that by simply typing in the name of the song, the artist or the album and you can see here it narrows it down very quickly and then what I can do from there is just click and drag that, the files that I found or a file that I found in there over to the playlist as well. And then I can just get rid of what I searched for by just clearing it in that box. What I can do is I can move files around, I just click and drag them up and down in the order that I like. I can also remove them, I can delete them by simply right clicking and choosing delete. That removes it from the playlist but it actually doesn't delete the file, it's still going to be available in my library. So this is basically just getting rid of the shortcut to it. So no harm will be done except for the fact that you'll have altered your playlist. The other thing that I might want to do is I might want to create another playlist that's sort of based on the one that I've already got. So rather than have to go and search for those files again, I can actually copy from existing playlists onto a new playlist like I just did there, taking one from February 2011 and copying it over to the rock and roll one. So there you can see my playlists. One of the things that I might want to do with a playlist is actually see how long the playlist is and you can see how big it is down there. And what I can also do is copy that over onto a CD. I can burn that to a CD by going into File and choosing Burn Playlist to Disc, which is great. So you can create CDs from your compilations. The only thing is, is that your, your CD actually is limited in size that you can have. Most of the time I get about 80 minutes onto a disc, but it depends on the size of the disc that you've got. You choose that and it will burn it on and then you can use that in another CD player, in your car, wherever. You can also create smart playlists, which actually can be used using criteria. So I can tell it to create a playlist based on a particular artist. And you choose artist, contains, and you type in the name of the artist, you click on OK and it will automatically find that artist. So if I do Eric Clapton, gives it Eric Clapton by default, I can change that. You can see it's found all the files there. You can create a playlist with more than one set of criteria and there's loads of different criteria that you can have. So again, I could choose to have my artist or many other things I've got on that list, including the year, I could choose that album, I can choose the genre and so on. You can see I can add more criteria in there to narrow it down. As the music changes, the smart playlist will also change as well which is quite handy, so as you add and remove songs, it will change for you. So as you can see, getting your music in there, whether it's on CD or already on a digital file, is easy if it's already an MP3, and then you can create some playlists and smart playlists as well. Those playlists will then automatically transfer over to things like your iPods, iPhones and iPads, so that's handy too. You can also make compilations on some of those devices as well. Next week we're going to take a look at using the iTunes store where you can actually purchase stuff, where to find some free stuff as well. There's apps on there too and also you will also be able to find podcasts. All podcasts are free and they're very good and very useful as well. So you've got a lot of work to do if you are going to do this. There are some CDs that you need to copy over onto iTunes and as I said next week we'll be taking a look at some more iTunes features. Thanks for watching and see you next week.